From personal experience, if I take somebody off the street, be it a friend, a family member, or somebody I've never met, and try and bring them into D&D, the first big obstacle is making the first character. If you throw the player's handbook in front of somebody for that first time, and they've never played Dungeons and Dragons before, it can be an incredibly overwhelming and complicated experience that doesn't really serve to benefit anybody but those who like the sort of statistic side of things. So, here's how to make your first character if you're happy to have a little bit of a generic character and there's nothing wrong with that. Step one, play a human. Now, it sounds like a ridiculous thing, but if you've got lots of different races in front of you and you're thinking, I don't know if I feel comfortable playing a dwarf or a halfling, play a human. Chances are, I mean, I'd put some money on it, you probably know how humans work. And actually in D&D, humans are very good. If you don't even play as a variant human, play as a regular human, plus one to all stats, that's a very good thing, actually, that will help you through the skill checks through the entirety of the game without really adding any complexity to it. There are entire classes that give abilities to skills and jack-of-all-trades things. Human gets it for three. Just put plus one on every stat. Done. Step two, play a fighter. Now, hear me out. Fighters are not boring swing attack monkeys. They can be very interesting, especially specifically dexterity fighters. If you play a dex fighter, you have lots of skills available to you from stealth to sleight of hand to being able to acrobatically move through the battlefield. You can use ranged weapons, a very important part of the game, and you can also use melee weapons. You can still use a shield, you can still use armor, you're not going to die quickly, you're still you're a fighter, you've got lots of health. It opens up a lot of doors and means that actually if you don't know from the beginning what you want your character to look like through the game, you might make a character and not like them after five sessions. A dexterity fighter can very easily be changed. The next step is use point buy. Now, hear me out, again, min-maxing is a problem with the game that I hate. It just doesn't work and there's 101 reasons why min-maxing will never get you to the place that you want it to. But point buy is very good if you're not sure what you want your stats to look like or if you don't know what the game feels like. You might look at a stat sheet and think, oh, 12 wisdom. What does that do? The first step is you put 15 on dexterity. It's the most you can give any score and we'll use a lot of the points that you get given. But remember, you're a human. You get plus one to everything. So already that 15 is a 16. If you're making any character and you have a 16 in your primary stat, that's good. That'll get you through most of the game. That's pretty good. The next thing you want to do is put 13 on constitution. Again, human bumps it up to 14. If you're worried about D&D, having a lot of health, never a bad thing. Always give yourself more constitution than you think you're going to need. I would always recommend, apart from some of the really niche classes like Arcane Strict, uh, Trickster, Eldritch Knight, some of the ones that require two stats, always go constitution with your second highest roll. It never ceases to amaze me how many characters die from hits that would not have killed a regularly powered person. And as long as I've done the maths right, I have, that means you have 11 for every other stat in the game. Oh no, wait, we're a human. 12. So you've just made a character with a plus three on your primary stat, a plus two on constitution, and a plus one on every other stat. You didn't know what character you wanted to play? Great, you've got a character that does everything quite well. It's actually very simple to do. Humans have an amazing ability to make every stat good. And because we're point by it leaves us to be able to put an odd number on every stat. Being a human has got us plus six ability score. Beat that if you can, variant human. I dare you. Now, you may be thinking, great, I've got all these stats down, but I don't know what the character's gonna be like. How do I make a character? Well, use a random name generator on Google. Honestly, Google it, random name generator. You'd be amazed how easy it is to get a good sounding name. I do it all the time in my campaigns because I can never make 700 NPC names. It's really good. And let's just say they all seem really high fantasy. You don't like any of the names. Well, open up your local gossip magazine and pick a celebrity you like. Honestly, no one is going to know if your halfling is called DeVito. 
you're worried about a backstory, keep it vague. We've got a whole other video on that one, but just pick a random thing. With this particular character, I can guarantee the one that always works is that you were orphaned, you don't know what happened to your parents, and that you ended up serving in the military for a few years before something happened. Great, that's a campaign sorted right there. You don't need any more than that. Honestly, any DM worth their salt will take those three things and think, great, enough to play with. Finally, if you're worried about how you're going to play the character when it comes to actually sitting down at the table, play as you. I can guarantee if you were sitting as a character in the chair, you would know how you would react. Just do that. Easy.